Hey guys, MCU Collector here with another figure review. And next up is the Hasbro Marvel Legends series Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, or is it Shang-Chi? Kevin Feige says Shang-Chi. I think we go with Kevin Feige says. But anyway, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. This is the Marvel's Mr. Hyde Build-A-Figure. Here we have the Wen Wu figure, which is actually uh, the official, the Mandarin in the MCU that has been um, announced from the very beginning. So that should not be as um, any kind Kind of surprise why he goes by Wen Wu as opposed to the Mandarin, whereas the Mandarin, I guess, would be more the title, and the Wen Wu is actually the name of the character specifically. I think there are some spoilery elements to this figure, um, so if you want to, you know, not know anything, I say turn away now. Spoiler alert! Uh, but anyway, let's get right to it. So we have the Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings logo there in the front. That looks really good. Wen Wu there. Side artwork of Wen Wu looks very good. I like that. Looking at the figure, the face, the head sculpt on this thing is amazing we get that um shang chi logo thing there the marvel's mr hyde build a figure up in that top corner of the back of the package we have a look at the mr hyde build a figure and all the figures in the wave starting with shang chi wen wu xiling or is it shiling uh, Death Dealer, which I have already reviewed, a Civil Warrior, and the Tony Stark AI. Um, so originally I only got the, the Shai Ling and the Death Dealer figure, but I ended up getting uh, Wen Wu, so I am pretty excited. And this actually, this one may actually be the best figure in the wave. I thought it'd be Death Dealer, but I think this guy might actually take it. But anyway, the bio, it reads, and this might be a spoiler. I didn't know this until I read it, but the information was already out there. Anyway, the bio reads, Wen Wu, Shang-Chi's father, Wen Wu is the feared leader of the Ten Rings organization, which has lurked in the shadows of the MCU since the very beginning. So, the Mandarin is Shang-Chi's father in the MCU. So, that's going to be pretty interesting. So, without further ado, let's get this bad boy open and take a look. Okay, and here is the Mandarin figure out of the package, except, of course, this is the Trevor Slattery Mandarin figure, not the real Mandarin in the MCU, which has now been corrected because I think people got pissed in Iron Man 3. But anyway, let's take a look at the real Mandarin. Okay, so here is the real Mandarin figure out of the package, Wenwu, um, and it looks really cool. Some really cool things about the figure, and then there's some things that aren't so great, which I will talk about. But here he comes with the right arm to the Mr. Hyde Build-A-Figure, and you can see there we get a little bit of the sculpted on hair and a little bit of wash on there to kind of show that detail. Um, so we'll throw that off to the side, and we get this big-ass cane form, which is this huge chunk of black plastic, and then brown plastic at the end there for the cane. Not a whole lot of details or anything into it, um, but it is pretty cool looking, but it's actually quite large. Um, looking at the Wen Wu figure, so we get this, and you guys will have to help me out in terms of what this weapon is actually called. Now, it's done in this dark gray plastic. We get a little black right there for kind of the handle piece. Uh, but again, if you guys know what this particular weapon is called, please let me know in the comments below, because I do not. But it looks really good. I like the color that they used, not like the cheap black plastic um, that always worries me. Now, interchangeable hands. So out of the package, he actually comes with fists. So here's the right fist. I already took it off and replaced it. Um, we have these two open hands. As you can see there, so he'll be able to hold the weapon with that hand. And then we get these two um, karate hands. Um, I'm not sure exactly kind of what um, what pose or position these hands kind of represent, uh, but they look very good. The details in them are incredible because you really don't usually get to see, you know, where the fingers are really kind of um, super detailed. You know, there's hand, there's there's hands where like the fingers are all kind of spread out type of thing, but in this particular way um it looks really good because it's it's very realistic like the fingers don't look too big or anything like that uh so i really like the way um these came out looking so we have a left one and we have one for the right which i actually already put on the figure there so um let's go let's go and zoom in on the head sculpt because the head sculpt is awesome by the way so let's check it out Okay, and here's an up-close look at the Wenwu Mandarin figure. Um, I think the head sculpt is probably going to be the best out of the wave. Maybe I'm wrong. I guess we shall see. I don't have the Shang-Chi Shang -Chi figure um, in my possession to be able to comment on that one. From pictures of what I've seen, it looks good. Yeah, but this one, man, this one looks great. I love it. The digital face print came out looking perfect. I love the details. The hair looks good. All of that, I think this head sculpt looks absolutely amazing. One thing I didn't really pay that close attention to also is the character design. Now, 
for the Mandarin, yeah, it's probably not great. Um, in the for what it is itself, without without you know the reference of being the Mandarin, I really like the suit. I, I really like the details and the patterns in it. So looking like here on the shoulder, just the, the pattern of it just looks so nice. The details of it, and we get that into figure form. We get this nice dark blue right here. Um, we also get, you know, around the collar, so that is a really nice touch. Just looks really good. I love the I love the sculpted details on this. I think the black and blue look really, really great together. One thing that I guess would be weird though is why is this shoulder not painted the same blue as this shoulder? So that might be something there. Come on, Hasbro. What's up with that, right? I mean, we shall see in the movie how that's going to be, but my feeling is that they probably just missed it, so it should have been blue like that on that side, but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Now, potential spoilers. This dude has five rings on this arm, five rings on this arm. Is the MCU changing it from actual rings like that go on fingers, like the Trevor Slattery's got, and doing this type of thing, or is this just part of the character design? I think it's too much of a coincidence to say five rings and five rings, but we don't really know. Now, one of the things that I don't like about this design is it makes this fist look teeny tiny, even though, you know, you have to take into account what the actual arm would be under and in between the rings, but it looks it looks funny the way they're molded. And the paint isn't really the greatest, to be honest with you. You know, the skin tone is up on the side ridges of those rings. So just overall, it looks bad. I get what they were going for, and it would have been hard to really get that paint correct, I think. So it just comes off looking a little funky. Um, we get this nice MCU 10 rings logo right there on the front belt of the sash there that is really nice we saw that originally in the first iron man movie you know dude and ant-man had it tattooed on his neck things like that looking at the rest of this look at that pattern that's on there you know i don't i don't personally know but you know doing something like that on soft rubbery material i don't know how easy or hard that may be but it looks really really good even looking at this part of it there the the, the details in that mold just looks really, really nice. Then he just kind of has black pants there. He's got these little pockets right above the knee, which seem kind of weird. And then a little bit of silver detail in the boots, like so. But man, I really like the costume design. I like the colors. I think they go really well together. Again, aside from it being, you know, the Mandarin, which typically you see him in green colors. Um, so that would be kind of the only thing, but in the context of the movie, how does it look? You know, how many changes did they make to the Mandarin? Should still be better than Trevor Slattery, right? Right? But we shall see. So let's zoom out for the articulation. Okay, so here we're going to go over the Wenwu. Now, I, I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed, you know, just like with Death Dealer, where we have very limited articulation on somebody that is can do all kinds of different martial arts. Um, it's tough when you can get a figure that's not going to be able to get you into a lot of poses and things like that. This figure is unfortunately not going to be any different because the legs are extremely hindered by um, part of his suit, this sash um, portion, whatever you would call that. It, it really, really gets in the way. But anyway, the head is on a dumbbell joint, so you get all kinds of crazy motion going on in the head. So pivot, swivel, all of that good stuff um, going on there. Shoulder, you can get the shoulder to go up that high on his left, on his right, same thing, but the shoulder pad kind of stops it there. You get a full rotation, of course, you have an upper bicep swivel, you get a double jointed elbow, like so, and then one of the things that they did with the elbow was they painted half the hinge, so you know you'll get some paint rub, and then the skin tone over that hinge doesn't look as good, so just be aware of that. Here on this figure, no ab crunch, but we get a diaphragm rocker on the dumbbell ball ball joint so we get all kinds of circular motion there so he could tilt to his pivot to his left that much he could pivot to his right that much you can go back a little bit you can come forward a little bit as well the waist um, also can kind of move in there a little bit too there's no swivel on it though so it's kind of odd so I don't know if that's whoops I guess I kind of pulled that down a little too much as you can see there so let me kind of get that back into place. 
I think I was just moving this bottom portion. So anyway, just the top diaphragm joint so you can move back. So you can go back that much, you can come forward only that much. So that's not a whole lot of ab crunch um, going on in there. The swivel is in the diaphragm joint also. There is no wasted swivel on this guy. But again, you're only gonna get be able to get the legs to go out like that far apart. And I'm kind of stretching it and forcing it into position like that. Kicking forward is gonna be another challenge. That ain't good, and you can't even, like if they put slits in here, maybe you can get some more motion in there, uh, but it, it, we're just not getting a whole lot. The knees are pinless, by the way, unlike the elbows. There is an upper thigh cut in there. You get a double jointed knee, but again, it's kind of hard to work that knee because you have to kind of work around um, the suit, but you get that much bend at the knee. One thing that's weird is there's no swivel at the boot. So, they, I mean, it's like a separate piece there, but it does not swivel. Foot hinges all the way down though, so that's good, I guess. Hinges up, which is great, more than we get on most feet. Um, ankle pivot and peggles at the bottom there. So, um, half the figure down, there's just not a lot of articulation. So you can do some good things with the arms and the diaphragm and things like that, but good luck getting these damn legs to move around into a position to do some cool martial arts and things like that. It's just, it's just not gonna happen, so. That does suck, but the figure looks good, but the articulation does suck. One thing to be aware of in, in putting on the hands to, to hold this weapon, and again, I don't really don't know what kind of pose to get him in with this weapon. I don't really know kind of what the use um, of it is, but um, you gotta be careful with this because what's happening now is I'm getting all kinds of paint rub and rubbing off the black paint from the handle. So if you look at the inside of his hand, um, there's a lot of black paint that's actually now transferred onto the hand, so, you know, be aware of that. So, let's see this guy next to some other figures. Okay, and here are some figure comparisons. So the only other figure from the wave that I have reviewed so far is the Death Dealer figure here with Wenwu the Mandarin. Here, Trevor Slattery the Mandarin. Just to show you guys what the MCU has done. We went from this to this guy. Um, the colors were probably better on this guy, but I like the design, of course, of that Mandarin better. How he will be portrayed in the MCU, I'm sure will be better as well. Time will tell whenever the movie comes, whenever we'll see a trailer, who knows what's going on. Shout out to everyone that pointed out that the Death Dealer t figure, the torso, is actually the Ant-Man figure from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, but it's actually a lot more, and I think somebody did comment on this. The legs and feet are the exact damn same on um, the... Uh, Death Dealer figure as the Ant-Man. So this is essentially the freaking Ant-Man figure just with new arms and that overlay and a new head. So damn, right? It's this, like, like the legs and the torso, completely the same. It's pretty crazy. The hands are different. I know that they're similar, but the hands are different. So um, it's just kind of crazy to see that, but interesting nonetheless. Okay, so silly me, I had the video fully rendered and everything and I'm thinking, what the hell? I didn't even do a head swap. Now I know head swaps aren't usually a thing that I do because um, a lot of times um, it just doesn't make sense to me and I, I just, I'm always worried about potentially breaking the ball peg. Uh, but on this one, I think it's one that we have to do. So if we can kind of see more so the classic Mandarin colors, let's see if this head, which pops off very easily by the way, will actually pop onto the Trevor Slattery, Slattery um, body. The skin tones aren't exactly a match. Uh, but the head does pop on there, so if you wanted a Mandarin that's a little bit more comic accurate, you can actually pull that off. Now, um, and from the front, it looked like it sat a little bit low on the neck, but you know, at the, just the angle that I'm sitting versus having it, I think that actually looks pretty good. So that's actually not that bad. Okay, so my final thoughts on this guy. The limit articulation sucks. For me, it's not as big a deal, but for anybody in the um, toy collecting community that does photography and things like that, um, it's gonna suck because the legs, you're just not gonna get a whole lot of motion in there. The diaphragm joint, I do think, um, really works well. The, the, the neck on this guy actually works out pretty good with the dumbbell joint. I actually kind of like. Um, like its use here because it, it just moves so, so nicely. I guess looking up and looking down, well, not so much an issue, but looking up, it's actually still pretty good. So I really like it. It gives you a lot of realistic uh, neck motion compared to some of the ones that we have seen before. Um, but the, the leg articulation sucks. The character design, whether you like them or not, so many people shit on the MCU designs. Um, you know, of course, they're not always going to look comic accurate. The MCU is going to put their own twist into things. It's going to have a lot of layers. It's, you know, sometimes it's the same color, sometimes completely different colors. You know, who knows? We don't know yet what's going on in the movie, and that's why it's difficult. Not even having seen a trailer yet, 
um, to know what's going on in the movie and how these characters are going to be portrayed because I think that informs a lot of our opinions on some of these figures at times. The figure itself, the design is cool, the upper body, torso, and everything, the articulation from the waist up um, is pretty good, but then when you go waist down, it, it, re it really sucks. Uh, but I think the head sculpt really saves a lot of this. It just looks really good, very realistic and lifelike. Um, sh so we shall see. I, I'm, I'm hoping the Shang-Chi or Shang-Chi figure, I'm hoping I can get that one soon and see how that one looks um, so I can really compare them. But this one is actually turning out to be my favorite so far. And that's purely based off of pictures and stuff that I've seen because I don't have them all. I thought Death Dealer was going to be my favorite. And while I do like it, knowing that it's mainly the Ant-Man figure just repurposed kind of sucks. Um, the design is interesting. I still love the head sculpt on this one. Um, as you can see, it just looks creepy looking eyes. But um, this Wen Wu Mandarin figure, um, I think is going to be my favorite of the wave. But you guys let me know down in the comments below what you think of this figure, uh, what you think of the wave. If you guys like the video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching.